In today's video, we're gonna be building a fully 3D printed EGW flying wing and taking it for its maiden flight. All right, friends, welcome to Flight Test. We have another 3D printed project here. Our first 3D project, if you guys don't remember, was our Eclipsen Model D. If you guys are new to 3D printed models and especially Eclipsen, Eclipsen is a really great company that actually designs 3D printed models to go all the way from basic trainers to amazing fast flying, crazy looking airplanes. Now this plane looked like it went really fast, but actually was incredibly stable. And we even put this to the test by putting a four cell on it and even letting my son fly. Had a great time, but at the end of this video, we actually asked you guys what you'd like to see next, and you guys voted and we heard it. This time, we're gonna be building the EGW-80. This is a crazy looking gall wing that looks like it's as dangerous as it is fast, with a big pointy nose and a lot of really smooth characteristics. This is also gonna be the first 3D printed flying wing style airplane that we're ever gonna be flying. We're really excited to see how strong it is and how it flies. So Noah's getting started on the build here, and you may not be able to see this, but this is actually getting built out of a very new material or new filament called LW. PLA. LWPLA stands for lightweight PLA. Now typically PLA kind of looks plasticky and it's really shiny kind of. It's pretty strong for its weight. LWPLA or lightweight PLA actually has almost like a foam feel to it and it makes it incredibly light and also really strong. You'll notice when you touch the surface it almost feels like a foam board airplane. So lightweight PLA is a foaming technology that has very low density and once it's hot enough it actually starts to foam up to three times its original size. This is really cool because it can actually reduce your printing time by printing thicker layers because the actual filament expands up to three times its size. Now this is a little bit more difficult to work with so you really got to make sure you fine-tune and optimize your prints beforehand but the final results are incredibly smooth and almost seamless. It, again it looks like it's almost like a foam board material that you're, you're printing with. This is gonna be really cool for RC planes, lightweight drone covers, and even things like cosplay. Anything that you're gonna to need to be lightweight but still maintain a lot of strength, this is gonna be a really cool new filament to work with. Now lightweight PLA also has a really cool story behind it and that's also with the people that created it. Now, this filament also started back in 2012, 2013 with a really cool gentleman named Rudd Ralu. So Rudd is the CEO of Helium Polymers and also runs ColorFab. ColorFab, Helion, and Black Belt 3D all share the same office space, so they actually work together to create crazy new filaments for us to be able to use. Now typically you see flight tests get really excited about different foam board designs and using different common materials. What really excites me now about 3D printing, especially these new innovative 3D filaments, is it's gonna make the hobby industry even more accessible to so many people, especially people that maybe didn't even think about flight because their passion was first in 3D printing. So I'm really excited to work more with this and also really loving what I'm seeing with this PLA. Now Noah's almost getting done with this build here. Let's go ahead and check out and see how he's doing. So the build's coming along pretty good. And now thanks to Graham Morgan, which was the guy that actually printed out these parts for us, ColorFab actually sent the plans over to Graham Morgan and he was kind enough to actually print them out and send it to us. Now this isn't my first 3D printed plane that I actually made. The 3D printed planes are printed in sections and what you do is you take those sections and you glue them together with CA glue. Now CA is very different from hot glue. Hot glue actually cools down and then hardens. Now CA actually it's a chemical reaction that hardens it. Now there's this awesome thing called kicker. Kicker is something that actually speeds up the drying process of the CA and it's really important when you're building these 3D printed planes. It really speeds up the process. After assembly it's time to pull on electronics. It's really easy on these planes because the designs actually have channels for the servo extensions, the servos, and also the motor. So the servos actually have their own servo plates. Now what you do is you actually screw the servos onto the servo plates. That way they're actually accessible after you're done. So electronics are coming along pretty good and all I have to do is finish them off and we're gonna get ready to fly. All right, so Noah is wrapping up the electronics. Now specifically, we're gonna be using the Power Pack B. Now if you aren't familiar with our Power Packs, basically it's a box that comes with everything you need to power your RC airplane. Now specifically, the Power Pack B is used in a whole bunch of our awesome foam board RC planes, but it's also gonna be a good power setup for this one. You guys might be familiar with like our uh, FT Simple Cub, the FT Simple Scout. There's a whole slew of different FT planes that use this power setup and it's nice because it's lightweight but it still has enough power and it's going to give a beginner even all the way to an intermediate a really good flying experience. Now on the EGW80 I'm a little bit curious to see how it is. I think it's going to be more of a docile experience than a high energy experience but we'll see. So Noah is wrapping up the electronics right now and we're going to be heading out to the field to fly but before we do I wanted to ask you guys to consider subscribing. It's because of awesome subscribers like you if you're already subscribed thank you that we're able to work with awesome companies 
companies like Colorfab and Eclipsen. And so if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do so. It's free and we got a plane to fly. So let's go get our stuff ready and head out to the field. There's a lot of key points they stressed with before you fly this airplane. A couple of them is making sure that your center of gravity is right where they say it is. There's actually two little indents, but they actually sent some notes saying if you move that back, that's the forward limit. If you move that back between five and seven millimeters, it's going to make a little bit more easy to hand launch. May compromise a little bit on that aero tracking, but they said it'll still be plenty stable. Also, the other thing I saw multiple times and even texts over was five millimeters of reflex in the wing and every wing needs a certain amount of reflex, not just flat. If these aren't set up right, when he launches it, it could end very badly. <laughs> so our, our center of gravity is good. Our reflex is good. My controls are working really good. You can check your direction and everything. Right? Oh yeah, just now. Okay. And, um, and what he's going to do is he's going to launch me with a nice firm toss. They say, don't toss this week. Give it a nice firm toss. And I put a little sandpaper on both sides of the keel to help him get that extra grip. Um, one thing you want to be careful anytime you launch a plane like this, even with the keel as far forward as this one is, which is pretty nice, is you got to get your hand out and down as quick as possible. You don't want to throw it like a javelin and point to where you're going or else that prop could possibly come through and cut your hand. So make sure if you guys are doing this, you practice this. After this maiden flight, I like to actually experiment with wingtip tosses. If you're really good at tossing wings from the wingtip, that's the safest and easiest way to go or to have a friend toss it that's an experienced uh, you know, wing thrower. So anyway, I'm stalling. You want to do it? I'm stalling. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to just, just milk it for every ounce because- Give it a run up. Sounds good. Yeah, okay. You ready? I think so. Okay. Did it feel powerful? Yeah. Okay. Felt pretty, pretty good. I'm just trying to go over my head to get my hand out of the way. <laughs> yeah, keep your hand. Just give me a nice toss about 20 degrees up. I'll have it with up. If it crashes, it's um, your fault. Okay. All right, guys. Good luck. <laughs> All right. Just remember, get your hand out of the way quick. I'm scaring the tar out of them right now. Yeah, thanks. I want to give it a throttle. Three. Why was I worried? That wasn't bad. You know, every one of Eclipse's planes that I'm always stressed about, I'm always like, oh my gosh, how's it going to fly? And then it just ends up surprising you because they look so beautiful, you swear they're going to be complicated. All right, let's just do some basic flybys here, see how she feels. What a joy, man. I honestly think I could go with a little bit more nose weight, but it is plenty stable. It's not uh, the quickest either. Well, I, th I could definitely speed up. One thing I'm noticing here is I got a big eight inch prop on the back. And whenever you give it throttle quickly, it definitely wants to torque. And that can actually be corrected through mixing with your throttle. So it actually mixes that out, which is a really cool thing to do, especially when you're swinging a bigger prop. But what a stable plane. And I just lost my prop. Do you see that? Yeah. I'll bring her down. All right. I know the answer. Yeah, I do too. We were experimenting here with some bobbins for spacers instead of uh, standoffs because our motor was too far in and we did lots of run-ups and everything. You did tighten them down, right? I tightened them down, yeah. Okay, but what was happening is that torque would actually wear down and we thought maybe it'll hold up. We ran a whole bunch of cycles. It was super smooth and I thought that's kind of cool yeah. because most real aircraft most aircraft in general aviation actually have these bobbins that go between the engine mount and the airframe. We're like, this is just like a real aircraft. Oh, yeah. We, we pooped out our motor, but it's in one piece. Yeah. So uh, let's, let's go check out the damage. We can go for a round two. Yeah. Shouldn't probably be doing experiments on maiden flights, but we thought it was really cool and we thought it was going to work in our favor. Looking forward to seeing what came off. Uh, this does have a 3D printed firewall and it's, you know, it's possible with enough vibration or something that could crack, but I think it's honestly our fault. But I don't think it's actually damaged that bad either. It looks okay. What do we got here? Oh, look, the whole X-mount came off. The bobbins didn't break. All right, so it wasn't the bobbins, and actually you can see right here, you can see our little bobbin mount, which I think is really cool. Um, it was actually, maybe your Australia didn't tighten the screws for the X-mount, but we still have a plane to fly. We're just gonna go fix it. Nice cool thing about this is even if something like this breaks, you just print another one and put it on and you're good to go. It's good as new. Let's All right, it. five minutes, we'll be back. So bringing it into the shop here, we took a look and I thought originally the bobbins that we put on to kind of be shock absorbing and also space the motor properly were what failed. It actually wasn't. It was actually the motors that screwed to the back of the X-mount of the motor and they probably just simply weren't tightened enough. This is a really cool reminder that anytime you put screws on, if you really want to make sure you don't have any issues with anything vibrating loose, use blue Loctite. Blue Loctite's going to be removable, red Loctite's going to be permanent. So everything's all tightened up, we got it all fixed, we're going to put a new prop on and head back out.
So as you guys saw earlier, Eclipse did a really awesome thing. We asked them to design this with a channel in here so we could put LED lights in it. And that's exactly what they did. And the cool thing about this is you guys can do this too. You guys can take the files that you buy, download, modify them, make them your own. And then the cool thing is if you do crash them or have a mishap, you can reprint it and everything that you created along with Eclipse and Design is all still there. So you can just build it again. Uh, we have the LED lights in here. I have the nose weight shifted a little bit more forward. We put a bigger prop on it. I think honestly, I want to revisit this because I think we can get this easily over 100 miles an hour. Oh, yeah. But I don't know if we can do that with the Power Pack B. It was a really nice, timid flying experience first round. I'm gonna see what it can do the second time, but I'm still thinking we can push it even further. So, no, are you gonna launch me? I'm gonna launch okay, it. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm doing such a disservice to the hobby because every 3D printed airplane that we fly, I'm terrified and I show that. I should be like, yeah, 3D printed airplane, I know, don't they, be scared. And they always go, it always goes well somehow yeah, it too. It always goes well. Are you ready, big guy? Yeah. Remember, get the hand out of there. <laughs> All right, Alex, you say when, you good? Good to go. All right, three, two, one. Oh, yes. All right, so the, the more nose weight definitely was perfect. It doesn't even hit the torque as much either. What do you think of those lights, Alex? It looks super cool. Yeah, definitely a little bit faster with that, uh, with that prop. Look and at that glow. You can tell it's tracking a lot better. Oh yeah, the extra nose weight. Center of gravity is really important, especially with flying wings. And uh, this plane is just so precision, you really want to listen to their tune. This is right on the marks, and it just flies like an arrow. No, no aura, no 3D stabilization, nothing. A lot faster too. You tell me when, Alex, and I'll start putting the coals to it. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> there it goes. Looks like it rolls nice. Oh yeah, she looks like it flies great. It man. flies, it flies on rails. It's just like every one of their airplanes. You could just tell they're engineered to look amazing. Oh, I tried to roll it upside down, and she just she does it, but she doesn't like it. <laughs> this does have an option for an FPV nose, and I gotta imagine flying this FPV has to be a blast. Covers a lot of ground quick. It doesn't look like it's going fast, but no, then when it you... cuts really good. It's pretty hard to keep up with. I'm really happy I turned the lights on. This is golden hour right now, but we have this cloud clever. A little bit of sleep moving in. Going oh, vertical. Wow, the torque is real with that prop. Yeah, look at the... You don't think it's going fast until you pull it vertical and you realize it just does it effortlessly. All right, everyone's gonna wanna know about slow flight. I'm gonna go ahead and pull her back, pull her back, all the way up. And she just basically just drops the nose and keeps on tracking. It is really hard to see. <laughs> I'm happy we put the lights on. All right, ready for a vertical punch? Yeah. Here he goes. <laughs> with the Power Pack B, it's a great, on three cell or four cell, especially with this lightweight PLA, it's just really light on the wing loading, tracks great. It's not unmanageable with speed, which is good. We don't need it to be we don't need to be intimidated if you don't want it to be, but knowing the fact that we can make this go a lot faster, I'm kind of excited. We actually had two printed frames and a big shout out to our friend, Graham Morgan. He's actually a community member, passionate about the hobby. He printed these two models for us in lightweight PLA. And if we didn't mention earlier, lightweight PLA is a little bit more challenging than typical PLA. It kind of foams and you have to have your settings right. They did a really good job in kind of communicating us what's needed. We'll make sure that's posted for you guys. So if you guys want to print lightweight PLA, you can. But Graham Morgan, he just was so passionate. It's awesome to see Eclipse and using our community members to uh, print. His homemade built machine looks incredible. And the resolution on this is amazing. The last Eclipse and model that we flew, I believe it was the Model D, uh, flew fantastic. It was, again, really intimidating. Literally, it was going to go 100 miles an hour. Had a real nice wing loading. It was really easy to fly. And you could also dial it up. This one definitely takes a lot more room than the Model D just because of the way that, you know, it doesn't turn on a dime. It's meant to be sleek and fast and smooth, and it's definitely that. But this is definitely something that you guys can step up into very easily, and it's not gonna be intimidating, especially if you keep it powered down similar to what you see here. This is something that you could honestly fly, say, okay, I'm ready for my next level or my next cool experience, and then you step it up to a higher KV motor or a higher, you know, like a four cell battery, like what we're flying here, and then you get a whole other flight experience out of it. But we're flying in what I'd say is a park flyer area, and we're keeping it in the, you know, we're keeping it in the playground and having a good experience. It is virtually hands off though. 
It just cuts so nice. It does cut nice. Roll rate is really good. Like you can see the roll rate. It's just real smooth. Pitch is about the same. I wouldn't try to do anything fast and quick on this airplane. And it really likes just to keep that happy speed. I'm flying a half throttle. I could probably fly all day like this. But when you punch out, you just have a little bit of torque. And then once the speed increases, you're fine. Look at that. We asked you guys in the last video that we did, what model did you want to see us fly? And it was pretty overwhelming that you guys wanted to see this fly. And I think I know the reason. It really looks like one of those planes that are terrifying. And we are honestly really nervous to fly it. I really feel like that anxiety is kind of misplaced because this is fun. She just doesn't bite you. <laughs> Making Noah slide back. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and bring in for landing and see how she behaves here. I'm thrilled, man. I can't wait to see what this can do going faster. All right, I'm gonna give this plenty of, plenty of room to glide. She carries the energy really nicely. Pull up. <laughs> Those little wire skids did their job. Nice. It worked great. That was awesome. <laughs> Awesome. All right, so throughout this whole build, it built quickly, it built easy, right? Yeah, really easy. You can put LED lights in it. I mean, this checks all the boxes and it's a really fun print. So guys, if you're thinking about possibly getting your first 3D printed airplane, you like flying wings, this is one for you. Yep. Now, one thing we're really surprised with is I thought honestly we'd be taking it and having to glue back together. I put it down pretty hard when the motor popped out and plus the center of gravity was really shifted in the wrong direction. But it hit pretty hard, but it was actually the only thing that broke was where the prop struck it. And we can simply 3D print another one of those. Yeah. And this is out of lightweight PLA, which arguably lighter, but also a little bit more fragile than normal PLA, just a touch. And it handled it really well. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited about this. We've been going through Eclipse and models one after another, and I definitely want you guys' input on what model you'd like to see us build next, because we're really having a fun experience going through 3D printed airplanes. The more we fly these, and the more I personally fly this, the more I realize this isn't something that people have to be intimidated of. You can build a beautiful airplane, you can put it together quickly, and you can have something to be really proud of and that flies great. So, Guys, thank you so much for voting for the EGW80 as the next model that you wanted to see tested. Don't forget to leave in the comments what you'd like to see us fly next, and we'll see you next time.